Of all the things that came out of the 2.1 story quest, perhaps the most puzzling was the people's reaction to the topic of death in Penacone, and people seemingly being heartbroken at Sunday's death despite the fact that the story quest literally just... Look, I really just wanted to talk about Gallagher today, but ultimately that's just gonna have to wait till tomorrow because we simply cannot proceed if we aren't all on the same page here, okay? Because the topic of death not only has important ramifications on that last scene with Gallagher and Sunday, it also reveals the entirety of Aventurine's plan. It clued us in on why Firefly has seemingly died 11 times while also hinting at the fact that Robin sought after death purposefully learn the truth of Penacone and is currently imprisoned by the family because of it. So let me say it once more. Let me say it loud and let me say it proud. Real death does not exist in Penacone's dreamscape. Nope. Now for those of you sitting there going, well, well, well how could this be, Dawit, you, you silly ducky? I'm sitting here watching these people die right before my very eyes. This is death, and so is this, and this is also death. So what sort of abhorrent interpretation of the text are you spewing upon me? This isn't up for debates, my nigga. This, uh, my friends, my, my amigos, my compadres. This isn't, this isn't my interpretation of the Acheron, please. Real death does not exist in Penacone's dreamscape. Uh, surely, no one can misconstrue this in any other way. Now, with that said, if someone dies in the dreamscape, they aren't permanently dead. At least not yet, because here's the thing. There's two kinds of deaths one can suffer in the dreamscape. The first is your, you know, run-of-the-mill death, be it Sparkle bashing your head in with a giant mallet, or you just like, I don't know, it's like the worst possible death you can think of. The eye, the Earthworks Latrine disaster, ah. What a classic. In instances like these, you simply wake up in the reverie. Achieving real death in this manner isn't possible, and Aventurine sums up why that's the case at the start of the quest. Panacone has made a solemn commitment to protect the safety of anyone inside a family dream. Any person in distress will be forcibly awakened and safely returned to reality. What gives them the confidence to make such conclusive statements? because behind this promise is the harmony. The family's dream weavers link up their minds together to construct an unbreakable defensive line. But then there's this second kind of death in Penacone, kind of like a hidden achievement. Sunday called it spiritual death and attributed it to the meme. However, it's not just the meme that can do this. This spiritual death is what we are all a lot more familiar with in Penacone as so far, Firefly, Robin, Aventurine, and maybe even Sunday have now experienced it. However, the thing that makes this death different from regular death and spiritual in nature is when someone dies like this, it's a result of the barrier being torn down. What's the barrier? You might be wondering, I got you. Let me explain, my friends. Towards the end of the quest, Aventurine likened Penacone to being a lonely island, and the family has built high walls to shield off this island from the outside world. While this barrier does keep death out, it also keeps out their secrets and the dark truth to everything regarding Penacone. Furthermore, Acheron plainly states that what's beyond the veil is the land of exile. Because this is the only way you can uncover a secret that is even more unspeakable than the serial murders. To use this dream death to get there. To that promised land people constantly seek in this grand gathering. Penacone. The legacy of the Watchmaker. The true land of exile. And now when a regular death occurs, the barrier holds and the recipient is simply awoken in the real world. However, when a spiritual death occurs, the barrier is seemingly torn down, giving the recipient the chance to walk into the abyss and uncover whatever truth may await them. This is the death that Aventurine sought. This is the death that Firefly sought. This is the death that Robin sought, all to uncover the truth. There are currently two ways this kind of death can happen. The first is you die to the meme. Given it comes from the other side of the barrier, it doesn't seem to be balanced by it. Firefly was somehow able to achieve death by the meme, despite it supposedly striking at random. And although it's heavily implied Robin also died to the meme, for some reason, Aventurine never mentions her in the same breath. But you don't need proof to have a suspicion. And for me, suspicion is enough. I didn't need to find the memory zone meme. 
I just needed for someone to kill me like it killed that silver-haired girl. Furthermore, Black Swan never gave a definitive answer as to the question either. I'm not sure the two cases were committed by the same culprit, but that massive wound looked like its winged blade. We've all witnessed it in action before. Plus, it seems unlikely that there would be two lethal entities loose in the dreamscape. And lastly, before I go off on a tangent, I also found it intriguing. We saw very little of the meme when it killed Sunday. So while I'm not saying she didn't die to the meme, I'm also not going to sit here and say she did die to the meme. Given the meme is unreliable, however, Aventurine needed to find another way to die that was similar to theirs. A way that would also tear down the barrier. So he turned to the emanator who brings death in finality, who just so happens to wield a weapon sharp enough to tear down the barrier. You don't sound very confident to me. Going out of your way to make citywide broadcasts in an attempt to involve more people. <laughs> you are simply betting on the possibility of someone being able to break down the barrier. You're very lucky that fate has decided to let us cross paths. I happen to be equipped with a very sharp blade. Sharp enough to slice through the veil of dreams. I can also carve the Harmony's brand off of you. Aventurine's plan was to always die by Acheron's hands, to get to the other side of the barrier and find the truth for himself. His entire gamble was whether or not Acheron would actually draw her sword against him. Had she not done so, he would have lost the bet. And so now that we've clarified the two kinds of deaths and my spiritual death is the dopest shit on the block, every nigga and they mama are dying to try. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's just dying, get it? <laughs> Let's review Robin and Firefly's case, starting with Robin. Robin's situation is a bit of a rough one. It is indeed, because it seems like from the very moment she arrived on Penacone, her voice was off, because her voice is produced by the residents of the Harmony. Robin reasoned something was up, so there was some bullshit in the air. And in a letter to Sunday, she wrote, quote, Since my return to Penacone, I have experienced a peculiar change in my voice at first, I thought it was caused by exhaustion or illness, but after consulting with doctors, they assured me of my perfect health and dismissed my concerns. However, my voice was worsened over time, and I even experienced periods of complete voice loss. In order to find answers, I conducted many private investigations, using my idle time out of rehearsals, of course. Eventually, I realized that the harmony in Penacone is not pure. A discord lurking within has tainted my voice of harmony, which I believe to be the root cause of my vocal issues. I immediately realized that such levels of interference can only occur if either a powerful external force is pulling the strings or if a senior member of the family is involved. Unfortunately, further investigations has led me to the latter conclusion. A bitch is fucking ace detective, I guess. This is an extremely alarming discovery. A traitor has emerged within the family in Penacone, and it is highly likely that this person is one of the four family heads. I trust you implicitly, dear brother, because of our promise. With the Charmony Festival on the horizon, I fear this person intends to impede its progress or even use the festival for some ulterior motive. At any rate, I suggest you monitor the other family heads while also prioritizing your own safety. You are the only true family member I have left. There is another matter that requires our attention. During my investigation, I learned about the Memory Zone meme death. My further inquiries led me to believe that the culprit who directed it to cause this series of incidents is likely the aforementioned traitor in the family. How does... <laughs> She's a genius, I guess. I have collected more clues and am prepared to verify my hypothesis. Rest assured, you can just focus on the preparations for the Charmody Festival. Once I've thoroughly investigated death, I'll come and meet you immediately. It won't take long, dude. It just, it'd be like if uh, fucking Ariana Grande figured out where Osama Bin Laden was hiding. <laughs> <laughs> so Robin decided to go off on her own and find out what the connection was between the Harmony being tampered with, the Memory's own meme, and the traitor from within the family. While on the surface it may seem like Robin playing Scooby-Doo is what got her killed, in actuality, it seems like getting killed was part of her hypothesis to uncover the truth. Robin then ventured beyond the barrier, uncovered the truth, and returned. However, the truth was so horrifying she can't speak it and has become mute. Unless 
someone goes to the other side of the barrier and lives to tell the tale. Someone already has. I got the idea early on, chewing on that masked fool's little hint. If a mute isn't someone who cannot make a sound, then it has to be someone who cannot speak. Someone who survived the treacherous depths, but is unable to take the stage and speak the truth. <laughs> well, I'm happy to know she's safe and sound, and still on Panicone. Not only that, but with this revamped definition on what a mute is, let's go back to the scene with Sparkle once more. And what did you do? You messed it up and ended up as their prisoner. I told you to make friends with a mute, not become one yourself. You really let me down. What do you mean? You know better than I do. Who watched the little songbird that couldn't sing perish right before their eyes? You did, Blondie. Uh, no, I, I mean... What did you mean by becoming one myself? It seems like she's implying that Robin has become a prisoner of the family. So while, yes, she may be safe and sound by Aventurine standards, Robin is currently a caged bird who can't sing. Now, where have I seen that imagery before? Mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. It's funny, because the pic shown is Robin free from the cage and singing, but whatever. Maybe we'll get Robin like Conan, like Don Hung. She, she'll just be chained up and... Alright, let me stop now. Then moving on, Firefly, who herself has been seeking to uncover the legacy, uh, died to the meme, but failed to go beyond the barrier and seemingly came back a fucking immediately as Sam. A Firefly later reveals that she's tried this 11 times and failed 11 times and now she's too intertwined with this world to do much which is why she then reveals herself to the trailblazer in a bid to get their help because it's as elio said elio is right in this land of the dreams you and i will reap unforgettable gains Elio from the get-go seemed to be aware Firefly couldn't do this all on her own, which is why she tasked her with uh, getting the Astral Express to hunt down the Watchmaker's legacy as well, so that when they inevitably find it, Firefly too may reap the benefits. Uh, barring some special connection Firefly has with this world, I'm unsure as to why she's failed so many times before she even became a part of this world. As many of you pointed out, who Acheron and Aventurine are actually referring to in this scene is Firefly and not the Trailblazer like I incorrectly stated. I never imagined that something I learned about unexpectedly would become the key to connecting everything. It's our Stellaron friend's identity, isn't it? I see you're in the know. However, whether the knowledge that Sam is Firefly helped to clue them in on this truth, or what Firefly's person's actual background is, isn't known. It could be once they realized she purposefully sought death, they began to put the pieces together, but who knows. I'm leaning towards them knowing more about Firefly's past, given events Serene referred to them as the Trailblazer's friend, which I mean, until the last scene, it's not like the Trailblazer and Sam were out and about being friendly in public. That was Firefly. Now finally, it seems like Sunday himself has also suffered a spiritual death, assuming this is of course the meme, which I'd imagine it is? It looks... Uh, I mean, uh, his genuine distraught brought about by what he believed to be the death of his sister seems genuine, so from this we can conclude two possible things. That seemed fucking paradoxical, but <laughs> it seems as if Sunday isn't aware of how exactly death works in Penacony, and he currently has no idea where Robin is right now. In any case, he has his own trip to the Abyss to worry about. So regardless, that about covers it for Death in Pennock County. Hopefully it's a bit more clear, and if I did get anything wrong, feel free to let me know. Now tomorrow we go back to focusing on Daddy.